Welcome. Welcome everyone. This is OLS 8 launch call. Um, I'm Malvika Sharan. I am one of the co-founders and co-director of OLS. I'm representing a really big team and very big community, and I'm really delighted that some of my team members are here. Um, I would invite Maya on the call to introduce herself, please. Hi, everyone. Um, nice to meet you. I'm currently a resident fellow at the Open Life Science, and I started as a mentee, facilitator, mentor, and passing the microphone to Mike. Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Michael, based in Kenya, um, part of the OLS team, also uh, part of the mentor. Finally, Anilda. Hi everyone, I'm Analda from Revolt based in um, the Western Cape in South Africa. I've been part of OLS since OLS 2 and I'm excited mm -hmm. about the new developments for OLS Africa specifically. We also have in the call Paz, but Paz will be using the chat to introduce herself. Um, I'm also going, I should have done that before, I'm going to visually describe myself. I am an Asian woman in my mid 30s. I am uh, wearing a black and white heat top with uh, something sparkly around my neck. And in my behind, there is a brown curtain. Um, I'm joining today uh, from a hotel and that's why my internet might be a bit shaky. If any time that happens, Maya, please let me know and I'll turn off my video. So I will share my screen and I'll show you a little bit about what um, OLS is about. And hopefully that would give you enough information to ask questions you may have. Um, just again, a reminder, we, ha we are on Twitter and GitHub. We are not on Mastodon yet. We are, um, our website is openlifesci.org for now, but look out for rebranding. So I want to start by um, acknowledging my co-directors uh, who are not on the call, but very much involved in the development and sustainability of the project. Those who do not know, OLS is a training and mentoring program that has existed since 2020. And uh, this is, we are in the eighth round of the training program. What generally we do is that we involve people, pair them up with a mentor who would be helping them work through the process of four months. Uh, all our mentees bring a project into the program and these projects allows them to think about open science training that we do in the context there context of their own research, own community. Our goal is very much to introduce the open science concepts, but not enforce them in a way that we see it. We really want people to understand that open science is a tool and framework that can be visualized and understood and integrated in the ways that is really meaningful for them. Um, we also provide mentorship training for our mentors. Most of our mentors are previous graduates from the program but also generally from the open science community who've been practicing um, and applying open science in leading their own communities. So um, we are actually rebranding. Um, so we will be officially naming our mentoring and training program Open Seats. Open Seats was the very first cohort of our program um, that had hosted over 20 groups and 20 projects. Um, and the reason is that officially, honestly, life in the name has always confused people. Uh, in the beginning, people were not sure if any project outside the life science can be applied. And over the years, we have really grown into embracing that open science is a concept that, that applies to all the, all the parts of the research that people do. So we, in order to avoid that confusion around, you know, if you don't have a life science project and you bring it, of course you can. And hopefully this renaming would help us communicate that better. Now we had started our program with zero funding with probably some fellowship money that we had, but very luckily in, in the last few years, we've been able to receive funding to ensure that we are sustainably uh, delivering our program, but also our, uh, growing our capacity building effort through uh, projects related to research to really understand how mentoring works over the years. Does it really impact local communities? How does it look like in different contexts? But also as Maya introduced, uh, we have resident fellowship program, which are newly launched. A lot of these pathways comes from the open seats. All the people who join our program 
um, they finish their four months training, but there's of course a lot that they can do beyond their four months and Open Life Science or Open Seats at this point is trying to provide that space. So we are definitely a small group of people kind of facilitating this work, but the community is really large. At this point, we have over 500 people in our network from almost all around the world. And we're really proud to provide this space. One of the unique point of open life science is to actually provide uh, the diverse opinion, diverse projects and diverse context that people come from. And this really allows people to think about if my research really applies to different contexts. Our initial uh, motivation was very simple. The group of people who came together to design this program, we really believe that science can advance only and only when researchers share their work with others. Um, we, we strongly emphasize on collaborative research, distributed collaboration, thinking about who, who we are bringing into the work that we do. Open science can definitely look very different. And uh, if you don't identify as a scientist and you call yourself a researcher or a citizen participant, open science also applies to your context. So maybe your project is related to storing data or sharing data uh, where open data principles can be applied. You might be a developer for source code and there you want to apply open source software practices. You're designing a hardware which combines open source tools and uh, physical objects where you can apply open source hardware principles. You, want, you can also share your methods and protocols before they are published officially in an article. But you, when you are uh, writing your article, you can publish them as preprints before the peer review happens. You can also publish reviews for your paper. You can build training materials to transfer your own skills into your network. This is called open education. You can collaborate with public through citizen science processes. And you can also support and connect other people where the community building and scientific uh, networks come into the picture. And OLS has supported um, projects that, that sometimes are cross team, sometimes specific to one of these practices. Um, sometimes people bring a project with a specific idea in mind, but then during the program, they change their goal because they learn about something new that they hadn't known about before. And uh, therefore, they're able to apply these newly learned skill into their own work. This is almost, you know, it is totally 11 years older study, uh, which had been done on 160 tech companies. They found that the level of strategic intent in openness and not just openness alone correlates with effective market performance. And the strategic intent, and not just openness alone, meaning that it's possible that you know that you want to apply an open source uh, license into your technology, but that's not in enough if you don't really reach out to the community who your users are and you don't really integrate their ideas into your project. You don't really show that commitment to the people or the users of your community that the technology that you're building is in their benefit. This one is from Open Air. Um, which is really aligned with what we just saw, which is about culture change. Open science is really about culture change, which requires people to build leadership, vision, and strategy for the work that they do. They also need to build targeted measure, right? People who are in the room to make decisions, build transparency, transparency and accountability. It's not just sufficient to take a decision behind the closed door, but really actually telling people how that decision was made, whose information was integrated, what kind of accountability for ethical consideration we are building. And also trust and confidence in the shared vision. Um, open science is really about building that shared vision for people so they can join you in uh, accomplishing the goal together. So these development and leadership skills are highly useful and transferable, but they're not formally taught in academia, at least not now. And we hope that in the future, it is part of academic system. Um, Therefore, uh, Open Life Science or OLS, I keep calling it with my last name. I should, I should really train myself better. The so OLS journey is where we bring mentees who we are naming as Joy, and we bring mentors and experts who we are gonna call Sam in this case. These are part of our community and they join the program with project of their interest. So the project leader mentees or Sam in this case, 
what they would do is they would receive training through cohort calls that OLS provides. Um, each cohort call introduce Sam to new topics. They provide them chance for discussion with uh, others through um, breakout rooms or Slack or different ways of communication. Um, and then these ideas that they learn through the call, they would apply that in guided practice and mentorship call. So uh, all of our cohort call are supplied with a framework or assignment, and these assignments are very much to contextualize what you have learned in, the, in your own project or in your own community. Then we have Joy, who's mentor or expert in the program. Uh, Joy would work closely with their mentee, Sam, throughout the cohort to guide their progress. And Joy would also bring different experts from the network to provide insights in places where Joy doesn't have the right skill. Um, so Joy is really a connector, making sure that they are building accountability for Sam to continue working in OLS. And they would also provide consultation over the progress that uh, Joy might be making. So what is the structure of the program? We have one week cohort-based training where we would go through different uh, topics in which are related to open science, but also about um, ally skill, inclus inclusive practices, community building, uh, showing different open leadership examples from the community. And then alternative week, you would be meeting your mentor. And with your mentor, you would be reflecting on the training-based learning that you did. And you would also apply what you've learned in your own time uh, into, your, into building your own project and community. So this is the snapshot of the topic, and this has actually changed quite a bit. Um, so first week is really about welcoming you into the program, making sure that you are connected with your mentors, you know exactly who you would be working with. You would start building tools and roadmap for your uh, project for the next four months. You would start building a project plan, meaning that we would, we would help you to build an online repository. You would think about also how to build a community for inclusivity, thinking from the very beginning what community building looks like in the context of open science. We also do panels where we invite uh, different successful leaders from the community um, who can represent what how open science has allowed them to build culture change or technology or policy. Um, or in any other areas that open science has become important. We talk about different kinds of open science practices, and we also think about diversity and inclusion, talking about ally skills as open leaders. So you can step up for others and use your own privileges to advantage your community. And then towards the end, we have graduation. So if you are interested, next week we are hosting three graduation calls from OLS 7 that you're very welcome to attend. That might also give you an idea for what kind of projects have gone through the program. Okay, so this is almost my last slide. Um, the idea is that we want to work together. This is not about us giving information one-sided, but making sure that we are hearing you, we're learning from you, from your own community, and connecting you with the people uh, to apply open science in a very structured way. You all might have actually known what open science means, but you might not have had the chance to apply it in your project in a systematic manner. A lot of um, time our mentors come back to the program as mentees. In fact, I have gone through the program as a mentee mindset myself. So you could be a returning um, applicant and that's a really wonderful way to use your time. I want to remind that we also understand that it's not enough for us to offer training and assume that everybody is able to access them. Therefore, we want to make sure that we provide micro grants for people who might want to have access to internet or small electronics or anything that allows them to attend the cohort calls and participate in the program meaningfully. So with that, I will stop for a minute and uh, check if we have something in the chat, any question people have asked so far. So far, no, no question. And so far, no question. Yeah, so what I want to do is make sure that you have some links and information. So this is where you would find the OLS 8 syllabus and Maya, um, actually I would just post that, but Maya can also share more links if you would ask her in the chat. So, First, let me show you, as I was saying, we have a little bit update in the curriculum. 
that you could look here. We have the timeline. So our call for applications are open um, and we will be closing them on uh, 7th of July. Uh, so please make sure that you have actually uh, registered on open review where the application is submitted. Um, in August, we will announce the successful applicants. The, I want to just remind that our aim is not to reject application. We want to make sure that uh, people have the equal chance to attend the program. Um, however, we also have limited seat of a limited number of mentors, so we cannot take a, a high number of applicant applications. So make sure that you actually apply in teams or by yourself, or if you have any doubts or question, you can email us. Would like to uh, look at the schedule in your own time, but um, this is where we centralize everything. So uh, we have Berenice who is looking at how to make sure that you have access to all the information, including notes that we use um, and information that you should have in order to participate properly. So you can have a look at what different kind of projects people, um, different kind of assignments people would apply. You can already browse what has happened in OLS 7 because uh, likely we will be replicating that process and uh, you would also find links to previous training material including videos that would be coming up we have a youtube channel where we load all the videos so that was about OLS uh, I talked about micro grant um, so have a look at micro grant if you are joining uh, from somewhere where you might have specific requirement around you know, participating in an online program like this, uh, you are very much eligible as a participant of the program. And all, generally we handle micro grants before the cohort starts. So now uh, let's think about applications, right? So we have this repository where we provide you with all the templates that you need in order to um, write your application and submit it. So, there is an open review platform, which is here. And you might need to register yourself. If you haven't previously used open review, it takes about a couple of hours or three hours to activate. So don't leave it for the last minute. Don't leave it on the 7th of July and you miss your deadline. If you know that you want to apply, even if, you don't, if you're not sure you want to apply, just go and register anyway. And once you have registered, you would be asked to put an application. And you don't need to be in the system to write application. We have provided you with templates that you can download. So I'm gonna show you one of the templates here. This is what gives you a bit of information about how to register. So I'm going to add that also in the chat and I'll explain um, for you all. So you, uh, we ask you to register on Open Review and in the application, we ask you to provide a title, project that you're bringing. Uh, we ask you to add authors. I intentionally want you to know that we, we really involve people when they're working in team. And we think that people generally who work in teams have better accountability. They have some other people to work with and bounce their ideas off from, and also build accountability that you actually participate in the program throughout the, the, throughout the 16 weeks without getting discouraged if you don't manage to attend one or two calls. So you would add your country, your affiliation. If you don't have an affiliation, just add NA. Um, so more, more importantly, here are the information that we need. We want you to describe your project. We want you to also describe what problem does your project try to solve? What achievements, what concrete achievements do you want to accomplish? You also want to reflect on what is the status of your project? Is it just an idea? Is it something that already exists and you want to improve it? Or is it something about maintaining something that's been running for 10 years? And hopefully you want to, if, if it's just an idea, you might want to go through, uh, go, go towards launching the first prototype. If it's already a prototype, you might want to think about building a community around it. So uh, those reflections are quite useful for you as an applicant. Then we ask you to describe what inspires you to work openly. This is for us to understand uh, what kind of vision you have about your project. You also want to describe the challenges you have faced in open science and what brings you into this program. We also want you to reflect on learning. What are your learning goals? Where do you want to grow? Maybe you want to grow as an open leader or a community facil facilitator or, or as a programmer. 
Um, this also allows us to think about which mentor we would bring. This year we have added another point around community, what community or communities you've been working with. This is because our community has grown a lot in OLS. We are over 500 people and we want to make sure that we are providing welcoming environment for everyone. And we're bringing the people with right intent into the program. Then you can also describe what kind of mentor do you want. If you already have a mentor in mind, you can actually add that if they're already in our community. If you're a returning applicant, please tell us if, uh, if you've previously participated in OLS, that would make it easy for us to directly contact you. You can also provide your accessibility requirement. Um, is there a specific accessibility that you need? Um, we don't really ask about revealing if you have a disability and you don't want to tell us, but uh, please consider that as a safe space because this information would stay only with the organizer of the program. You, could, uh, you can also actually provide what language do you prefer. So we have some people um, who prefer their mentor to speak in French or Spanish or specific language uh, if, that's, if English is not your primary language. If you don't provide a language, it's likely we assume that English, you're comfortable with English speaking mentor. Yeah, so that's, that's about the um, applications. And I think this is a good time for me to um, close the recording part of it and open the call for any questions that you have, anything that you wanna ask the OLS team.